Welcome to Blocks and Talks, the podcast that brings you everything you need to know about LEGO. From covering past, present, and future LEGO sets, to interviews with notable community members, our show covers it all. So we're back with part five of Lego Pirates. This one will be a bit lengthier episode because we'll be covering three years this time. We'll be covering 1993, 1994, and 1995. This will basically come with the uh, continuation of the Redcoats, um, introduction of the Islanders faction, and then uh, Iron Hook, I believe. Yes, the Iron Hook pirate faction. And once again, of course, I'm joined with James. How's it going? Good. How are you doing today? Great. Yeah, so why don't we just dive right into it? And of course, we're going to go in chronological order. So we're in the year 1993, just following the introduction of the Redcoats coming in strong and showing off their guns. Now we see what they can provide after. So set number 1970, Pirate's Gun Cart, 31 pieces, two minifigs. Um, it had limited retail release. I'm sure James can provide more insight into that. but. For nowadays, it costs around $17 used, and strangely enough, it's cheaper than you. It says $13. Uh, probably just an error. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to see that it's actually cheaper than new. When it says retail at least, it looks like it says only North America. So the rest of the world actually never got to even obtain this set. Now, that said, when it says retail limited, it could also mean that there's a good chance that most stores even carry it. It could have just been like a Walmart or a Target. So... A little bit limited set, but I don't think people are missing out on much. It's a very simple gun cart. These things never actually really existed until more of the Western time period. However, I still find it kind of cool. Yeah, basically think of it like a huge cannon cart, but instead of a cannon, it's just three Lego muskets on top. You get like two pirates. Very basic. But... And then following that, we got 6237 Pirates Plunder. Another tiny little set, 21 pieces, two minifigures. Retail for $3, um, around $18 used, and surprisingly enough, almost $100 new. It's pretty expensive, and I think we can you know, limit that because it's a box compared to the poly bag we saw in the last one. And I like this little set. It's just nothing new, really. Pretty cute. You see a red coat um, captain or sergeant, which is always good to get, and you get a typical pirate. And... I'm guessing the story that's playing out here is the pirate found some buried treasure and the red coat's about to rob him or technically steal it for the for the king, if you will. Yeah. And it's it's almost like the original version of like the add-on packs. It's very simple, just the yellow sand base plate, chest, some sabers, um, some gold coins, a couple flint lock pistols, parrot, like one leaf element. Very, very simple. It's like just accessories, basically. And yeah, so following the simplicity, we got a very slightly more complicated sets. 6252 Seamates, 32 pieces, four minifigures, retail for around $7.25. And the resale value is around $35 used and $160 new. Yeah, this set is definitely a remake of the original Pirate Crew or Shipmates, I think the original one was called. I'm not entirely sure. The original one back in 1989 where it included actually three pirates and two blue coats. So it's kind of a shame here we only got four figures instead of five. But nonetheless, they gave you a red coat, a red coat captain slash sergeant, red beard again, and just a traditional pirate crew member with a monkey and parrot and treasure chest of gold coins. It's just a good accessory pack. Yeah, very simple. And I think there's also a red coat normal soldier as well. If uh, if the Correct. box art's not deceiving. Yeah. So yeah, very standard, very basic. Think of it like a battle pack. And yeah, that kind of wraps up like the tiny sets. And now there's just a couple sets this wave that actually have substance, which first one is 6266 Cannon Cove. Came with 106 pieces, three minifigures, retail for $17.50, which would set you around 16 and a half cents price per piece. Resale value is a bit of crazier here. We got $47 used and a whopping $300 new. It's a really cute little set. I actually really like the design of this. This is the red coat version of Saber Island we saw the blue coats have in 1989. 
a nice cheap affordable kind of watchtower quote unquote type set you get a red coat soldier a red coat captain slash sergeant a red coat flag a tiny one which is always great to get a cannon a simple base that does have a prison behind that big ugly rock piece a red rowboat for the pirate or crew member depending on how you want to see it and yeah it's nothing too crazy i like the base plate that's included it's not a traditional plate it's a it's a full-on base plate which is really thin it's nice however it's on grass which i always find kind of interesting it's not on like yellow for sand or anything like that yeah i think if anything this suggests especially like the mountain piece on the side maybe this is intended to be like on an elevated level or something with the presence of grass very simple like you said lots of white elements creating a, a simple fort structure you got the big old fashioned like mountain mold piece got like a little window esque kind of area for the cannon to fit through and like you said very simple gets the job done kind of thing and i did want to mention real quick before we jump to the next set that yeah. the corner wall piece there with the red brick printing is actually exclusive to the set in white um, um which is kind of interesting why that piece is exclusive okay th- i think that definitely could influence why we're looking at these crazy resale prices but yeah because i think previously most of them are on like yellow pieces right the the worn out brick correct and actually the exact same worn out brick print was on a yellow corner tiles or corner plate Mm -hmm. corner wall correction yeah so getting it on white is actually pretty cool yeah especially since i think white probably an easier color to build with too than yellow i can see why there's there would be a lot of desirability i mean honestly i wouldn't even be surprised if that one piece made up a reasonable chunk of the resale value. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either, to be honest. Yeah, and just in case you've missed any pirate ships recently, uh, LEGO comes back with quite a few. You got 6268 Renegade Runner, 178 pieces for minifigures, retailed for just under $40, which would put you around $0.22 cents price per piece. Crazy resale values once again, and if you couldn't tell at this point with pirate ships, um, they're always going to have great resale value. Hundred thirty dollars used and an astounding eleven hundred dollars new. What a price! It's job. a very expensive set. It's a very expensive set new used. I feel like it's actually a really good deal for what you're getting. It's it's a schooner. It's a sloop. It's kind of whatever small vessel you want to think of it as. It's. It's kind of the pirate equivalent to Imperial Flagship we saw in the last episode. This one uses the same hall pieces seen in them, that, however, it doesn't use the middle one. So it's just the front and the back hall piece, making it only two hall pieces long. I like the sails included. The uh, spanker is nice having the pirate print. The fact that you get the small and the big pirate flag is great. You do get a working compass in this set, which is always a fantastic element to get. You get one cannon on a swivel base. And interestingly enough, the figurehead on this ship is one of the dragon plumes from the Lego Castle Dragon Masters subway, which I always find kind of interesting. Hmm. Way to reuse and get creative with the parts, Lego. And I think a theme we're eventually going to see later down this episode is how um, all of these like specialized parts, like we've mentioned in past years, like all these little battle packs and stuff, treating such like fantastic specialized pieces like musket sharks and stuff, it's going to start painting the picture for how Lego like was on the verge of collapse. So just keep that in mind as we like start detailing all these sets and like what they include. But like you said, James, very simple set. Definitely. I mean, uh, one thing I do want to mention, there are two things. Correction is the fact that the ship doesn't have a steering wheel or any type of steering mechanism. So you kind of have to use your imagination with how it sails around. And secondly, I did want to mention that this is the second appearance we see Captain Ironhook. This will not be his last. We do see him in the next year. However, the last time we saw him was within Raft Raiders from 1992. So it's good to see him again. And it's nice to get, like I said, that rival pirate faction to rival Captain Redbeard. Yeah, it's always nice to see. Like That's what um, this entire theme had a charm with. It was like, it wasn't just good guy versus bad guy. It was like competing good guys in a sense because you got red coats, blue coats and stuff. And as we'll see later, Spanish Armada. And within the pirates, it wasn't just like one pirate. They were pretty realistic, like it isn't just one big pirate group like there's a bunch of different like small factions and stuff that are all out for like their own booty it slash loot so you know it's really nice that lego was able to keep that in mind as well and that leads us to the last set of this year 
pretty impressive, actually. 6286 Skull's Eye Schooner. Can you do it? 912 pieces, nine minifigures. Retailed to pretty expensive for its time. $126, which will put you around 14 cents price per piece. Crazy, crazy resale values. Get ready to stomach this one. $500 used and $2,000 new. I mean, where do you even start? I mean, you're lucky. It's like I'm sure trading post. You're lucky to even find this set in good condition. And then when you do, you're going to be spending, I've seen it upwards of six to $700 in the used market, let alone new. What you're getting is a fantastic ship. I think if you don't, if you ignore the Black Seas Barracuda from Barracuda Bay in 2020, this is probably the best pirate ship we've ever gotten from Lego. Of course, the Black Seas Barracuda from 1989 is a classic, but this one really does just look impressive. The sails are really nice. Hell, they're all different sizes, or at least that main mast, main sail is a different size, which is nice. You get kind of a full array of sails. It doesn't feel like the ship is empty or missing any sails. It, it feels good. You get a whopping four cannons per side, and you do get four cannons included with this set. You get a nice figurehead with kind of like a white body and a black head with a black pirate cap and a sword you get a shark you get a place to put the rowboat which is always a really nice thing that most ships should have that's nice to get here you get a crane winch system that i believe actually does work it's not like the past ones where you just tied it to a one by one modified plate and you had to pull it around depending on the length this one i believe does actually have a correct winch what's not to love and also i do want to mention that you get the merchant figure for the second and the final time in the entire pirate wave. We last saw him in the pure trading post, and this is the last that he's included in. Yeah, I mean, I think this is like an all-encompassing, fully fleshed out ship, like you said. And it just looks great. You got like the big brown hole piece, really sleek color scheme of red and white, little tinges of green, and then the black and white masts. Looks really like, unlike other ships, I think the colors are really uniform, blend fantastically well. And I think you made a great point about how, like, yeah, every part of the ship has something going on for it. There's no, like, dead spots or empty spots. Everything has something going. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like, based on where, like, the steering wheel and stuff is, it looks like there's enough space for, like, a, the captain's cabin. Correct. There is a captain's cabin. I will say the Black Seas Barracuda from 1989 actually had a better cabin. And the only reason I say that is because this one actually has a working um, steering mechanism. So that mechanism kind of, intrudes on the into the cabin and takes away some space but i think it's a worthy replacement if you will yeah and i think the price definitely backs up how impressive this set is it is armed to the teeth it looks great from like close up and afar definitely a really solid set and a great way to end off the the year of 93 which actually is the perfect transition to 1994 and this is when we're introduced to a, a completely new faction an interesting one too they're called the islanders essentially think of them as like natives of a made-up island per se um there were also some other sets more related to like the standard pirates line but i think those we can admit since they seem more like specialized and off on their own so that could be like for a future episode so yeah just like a heads up this one this year will be mostly on the islanders and so this is the perfect segue into 1994 where you see a completely new faction this time the islanders they're a little different in their own way. They're basically what is the equivalent of like a native, uh, I guess lack of a better term, native islander. So yeah, I'm, uh, James definitely has a couple things to bring up on this before we begin. I think it was like about just how it was perceived at the time versus now and such. Do you want to dive inside a bit, James? Yeah, I'd love to. So in lore, these guys were called the islanders. They were based off of the Polynesian islands that are kind of on the coast of Australia, which is kind of interesting because that means they're not even close to the Caribbean. So I don't know how they're equivalent to pirates theme, but either way, they are cool. Now, obviously you can't, we're going to look at these sets more subjectively and just looking at the actual set themselves versus the lore behind it. Cause in Lego's lore, they call these guys cannibals. And I don't think this is aged very well. Uh, there's, there's some parts of this. I feel like, are okay because you don't actually see any imperial soldiers which is good because that's a whole another history on its own and you don't see redbeard our protagonist instead you only see the islanders 
and Captain Ironhook and his crew. So I feel like Lego tried to handle it the best they could, but I feel like they could have done a lot better. And I don't think we would ever see anything like this ever again. There's just some issues with it. Yeah, I think um, nowadays, you know, things have changed. So we see it differently. But at the time, not saying it was understandable or justifiable, but it wasn't like as frowned upon, if that makes sense. Like it was more of a, okay, this is just another toy kind of thing. So to kick things off, and just for reference, we're not going to call them cannibals here. We're addressing them as islanders just to keep the consistency there. So kicking it off, we got set number 6236, King Kahuka. Yeah, I've probably butchered some of these, so my fault, King Kahuka. 45 pieces, came with one minifigure, which is what the set is named after. F- retail for $4, nice little intro set. Um, used around $20 and new 100 it's a really cool set, and yeah, I, at least I've always pronounced it King Kahuka. I don't know the correct pronunciation. I just remember the Lego Racers game. He was one of the champions. You got to fight, or I guess in this case, race. And very nostalgic character for that reason. I like the printing on him. You can see that they use primarily yellow torso and leg pieces to represent skin. And you have some necklace detailing, some grass skirt, which is kind of nice. And you get a really nice exclusive helmet mold, which um, is exclusive for King Kahuka himself. You see a new accessory plume set in this one. It works just like the castle ones before it, and it comes on that little circular screw. And you get one of those kind of feathery-like plumes that King Kahuka has on his mask, and you get two of those horns on the screw. So some new pieces introduced here, and I want to also mention the first time we're seeing the castle oval shield in a pirate's theme. It looks very nice. I love the printing on it, and the throne itself is quite simple, but still pretty nice. Yeah, basically the entire set is just a really tiny brick-built throne. Pretty simple. Um, yeah, like you said, it comes with the titular character. Really cool-looking mask. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like lots of like layering on the front it's a red mask and then there's these like horns on the side a white little plume on top and it's cool you get these two shields too to represent like i guess their tribe or whatnot and really unique looking art pretty simple set nice it is a really it is a really cool looking mask i've seen some people at conventions make really beautiful mocks like a bigger version of it to like represent a gateway up to an island or just a statue and you can get some pretty cool stuff with that design yeah definitely cool you can get the like their leader in a pretty re- affordable set and then next that we got 6246 crocodile cage i think this set's a little more dark which we'll get into came with 59 pieces two minifigures retail for seven dollars 25 cents set you around 12 cents price per piece used around 21 dollars new Give or take 130. It's a nice, simple little set. It's definitely a little bit darker. Um, I've seen a lot of theories, and this goes with the last that we took a, take a look at the uh, King Kahuka and his throne. Um, you see that one by one cylinder yellow piece with the horn on top. A lot of people think of those as shrunken heads. I don't know quite what to think of it. I'm not going to think of it that way. Um, so that's interesting. And then you got the cage itself, which is using a whole bunch of brown spears as bars, which I actually do like. It looks very, you know, homemade and quickly put together. You can tell they didn't have that ready ahead of time. Campfire is nice. And it's our first take a look at a first chance to take a look at one of the typical island warriors, not King Kahuka himself. And you get a bow, another one of those shields. You get a bush, you get a crocodile, which is hence in the name, a parrot. And a sword and musket for the pirate that is captured. Yeah, it's cool that um, while completely different, it still remains kind of true to like the pirate core belief of like specialized parts and tons of different features for each set. So you can always customize. And yeah, like we said, Islanders seem to be mostly like they, they run the yellow skin tone and just have some basic clothing on suggesting warmer weather. They just got like grass skirts, some little... uh. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Like maybe feathers or plume dress around their neck. Really cool. They got the traditional Lego smiley face, but instead they got like these dyes on it. So they got like half white, half red kind of um, like face painting. I think that looks really cool for its time. Um, is that a hairpiece or a hat that he's wearing? 
the Islanders. Can't I believe it is supposed to be a hairpiece. Yeah, think of it like a a dumpling almost. Uh, I think that's the best I way was, I can it describe looks it. Very similar to uh, it looks very similar to the hair pieces we see, or the hair wigs, if you will, that you see in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, with that island scene. It almost looks identical. Yeah. And yeah, I guess it could be a shrunken head in the back there. We'll kind of overlook it. But yeah, definitely a darker set, especially if you see the pirate in jail, the Islander Guardian, and the suggestion that they could be cannibals. Like, eh, a little dark of a set. Questionable, but yeah. And then next up, we got 6256, the Islander Catamaran. It reminds me of like the Star Wars Wookiee Catamaran. Um, 63 pieces, <laughs> two minifigures, $12, 19 cent price per piece. Um, value used around $41 and new around $150. What a nice little set. It is a perfect catamaran. I pronounce it catamaran. I'm not sure what is the correct pronunciation. Um, I love the fact that he uses two of those canoe pieces. This is, I believe it's the first time we're seeing that mold. Oh, and hmm. they actually, one, one thing I'm pretty sad about is that he uses stickers on the sides to get that detailing. Oh, really? Which, oh. Yeah, so use the stickers, which, and if you don't know, these canoes can actually flow in water. So a lot of kids did that in the past. So the stickers, it's hard to get it one in good condition. Um, however, you get Kinkahuka himself. You get the first Islander um, female in the set, which has kind of like another necklace type thing and a grass skirt. And you get a beautiful cloth sail with the Kinkahuka logo, the Islander logo, if you will. Two parrots, which are very suspiciously perched in the exact same way. I almost wanted they're supposed to be statues. And you get a crocodile on this set. Overall, I think it's pretty nice. Oh, and you also get the two by two round tile that has like a I don't even know what you would what animal that would be, like a zebra print maybe, but zebras were in Africa, so I'm not entirely sure how they got it. Either way, it looks really nice for like representing a drum, like a tribal type drum. Yeah, and this Pretty simple set, like you said. Two canoes connected by a bunch of arch pieces. Very small. Tons of specialized prints. Like, you got the stickers on the sides, the big sail, all these unique prints. And I think there's a certain charm to this theme. It's like, Pirates had its own where it's like very homemade equipment. Like the wooden rafts made of like just anything. The Imperial Army and blue coats and whatnot. They seem very orderly, structured. They had like very linear and um, clean looking boats, for lack of a better term. And then the Islanders here, they're a little similar to the Pirates, but at the same time, it's like they kind of have this uniqueness where they're kind of like true to their culture. For us, like we're kind of having trouble describing what we're seeing. But I think if anything, that just kind of shows how cool these things look like. For them, this is like the way they distinguish and identify themselves as, which I think has like its cool little own flair to it. Oh, definitely. I also love the backgrounds of these box images. You can see like the volcano erupting in the background, the beautiful like, sunset sky. It just looks beautiful. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think this is my favorite like background art. It looks like it's sunset. The sky is like a nice blue mixed with some like yellow, red, oranges. You got like suggestions of little islands with palm trees in the back and everything. Really nice looking. And this starts bringing us to the slightly larger sets for this wave. We got 6262 King Kahuka's Throne, 146 pieces, five minifigures, retail for $21, set you around 14 cents price per piece, $53 used, $225 new. So we're starting to enter slightly bigger retail values. And it's a very nice set. It includes King Kahuka's Throne, which is funny because we saw it kind of earlier. However, this one is more on, I don't know what you call that. It's it's a platform that two islanders are carrying him on, and you can actually set that down in the middle and kind of have it represent a throne. I do like how there's a campfire next to it. Behind him is somewhat of like a cave structure with a treasure chest and some gold coins. You get a drum again. You get a red rowboat for the pirates. You get two pirates in this set as well, I should mention. Kinkahuka as well. And you get one of those cloth sail pieces. This is not the first time we've seen that cut of cloth however it's the first time seeing that colorway for the cloth sails now it being the black and white you can tell it either matches the skull's eye spooner however i think it's supposed to go more with the renegade runner being more of captain ironhook 
we do see that sale with those colors again in a future set. But I just want to mention real quick too, one of the most exciting parts about this is the Kinkahooka statue. This is our first time taking a look at that. And what a cool little build that is. That you can actually get that referenced again in um, Barracuda Bay from 2020, which is a nice inclusion. Yeah, really solid set. Um, it kind of like is suggesting this is when the pirates first meet the islanders because you see the islanders delivering king kahuka via like some kind of carriage handheld carriage kind of thing handheld seat so it's kind of like you know the stereotypical movie kind of entrance where the foreigner meets the the leaders of the island yeah like you said really cool brick built like head structure on top reminiscent of like king kahuka's mask really cool especially for its time i think it looks pretty darn detailed you see a chest full of golds which suggests that these islanders probably have money to barter with or just something worth the value to these pirates a little scary though because you definitely see a pirate fully armed to the teeth got the musket and saber drawn and aimed at them wonder if that suggests any conflict i mean given the prison lockup over in the previous set i, I would guess so and yeah nice set and i could definitely see some conflicts with captain iron hook and his crew um, I remember in the lore somewhere, I don't know where I found it, there's some lore about how Captain Redbeard was actually raised by the Islanders. So Redbeard and his crew are very friends with them, as you can tell Ironhook is not. Could be like a retaliation thing, since like those two pirates are rivals, he'll take it back on the people that raised him. Kind of. Thing. Exactly. Yeah, I guess that's open-ended, and part of the nice part about pirates is that the lore is all open to the user to decide. And expanding that lore, we got 6264 Forbidden Cove, 214 pieces, four minifigures, retail for around $30, set you around $0.14 cent price per piece, $70 used, and $430 new. And at this point, by episode 5, if you can't tell, new for bigger sets always suggests you're going to shell big bucks for these sets. Yeah, it's what a cool little structure. It's Interesting, when you look at the front mask there, it's a little bit of a different interpretation to the statue head we saw previously. This one's a little more elongated, which looks very nice. You get another Islander canoe with another treasure chest and more is a spear. You get two Islanders in a set. One of them actually is King Kahuka. He uses the same prince, and his mask is actually perched at the very top, kind of as a, I don't know, like a statue-like thing. At the very top, he's perched. You get a parrot, Captain Ironhook himself, a pirate and his rowboat pirate flag to go with it, crocodile. And pretty much what you're getting is a watchtower for the islanders. And that front head dome structure can actually swivel to the left, which can open a little channel, if you will. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, reminds me of like the Moe Eye emoji. So I'm going to call it that the Moe Eye statue. Um, yeah, lots of little palm tree details. Like you said, suggestive of a battle, watchtower. Pretty simple. It's like a big blue base plate to suggest water. Still, they're sticking with yellow for sand on the sides. Watchtower seems like a black and gray base to represent stone. And then on the top, there's like red. Interesting. Um, yeah, pretty simple set. Uh, staying true to the theme of like very tropical feel. Very like kind of like some conflicts, kind of not. And yeah. And then that leads us to. The big, the big bad of this wave, like every wave has its own um, crown set, and this one is 6278 Enchanted Island, 428 pieces, 7 minifigures, retail for $66, around 15 cent price per piece. Actually a crazy difference in used and new, around 190 used, but 1100 new. And I think you can just basically interpret this as like, you know, the, uh, the, the natives slash islanders home island. Yeah, and it's kind of I like that little cove that they have. The how there's a water channel going between the two base plates. And yeah, you do get two thirty two by thirty two base plates. One's a typical flat, just standard base plate with some print. And the other one is a raised one that has some stone structures that are raised up. You get a nice rope bridge, which is always a great inclusion. I love that piece. You get a monkey, you get and a couple drums, I believe, a campfire, some treasure chests, a bigger um, statue of King Kahuka in the 
right corner, which is actually doubles up as a prison cell on the back. You get a couple watchtowers connecting, connected by the bridge. You get, funny enough, King Kahuka riding a crocodile, it looks like. And you get two boats. You get a mini catamaran using the same sail element we saw earlier. And we get Captain Ironhook in his rowboat, which uses that, once again, same sail element I mentioned earlier that it's exclusive with the black and white print. And you also get a tiny tri-sail in the front of it. I just really love that little rowboat, too. Oh, yeah. There's a lot to unpack here. Like you said, two base plates. It's really cool because one is raised, like you said, but each raised part is like gray, but has green like foliage printed on the sides to suggest like really thick, dense jungle. It, And then on the other one's flat. But on both of them, there's this like connecting river piece that makes like a half circle. So it looks like cutting into the island is like this little river entrance surrounded by this these sands and rockiness. Very uneven terrain everywhere to like give you the idea that this is an island and not like a naturally cleared out or artificially cleared out structure tons of fighting going on with the pirates and the islanders cool little things here and there like you said there's like a monkey chill and a parrot more foliage little like those iconic horns that the islanders have little like poles um their emblem even a drum and yeah pretty solid set and overall i think the islanders it was it's not a bad theme like i think it stayed true to the idea of pirates like each faction bringing something unique and staying true to it although i do wish there was a little just a slightly more room to it like we see the most expensive set was 66 dollars retail at the time so it feels like lego played a bit safer with these sets didn't go as all out or maybe they just didn't know what else to put before like they start crossing to line to like maybe straight controversial but yeah, I feel like there were a lot of open spaces or stuff that could be used for things. But at the same time, it was like Lego is probably playing on the safer end of things with this theme. There's definitely a lot you could have done, like either including houses for the Islanders, like either wooden or stone huts would have been really cool. And even a bigger set being a temple or even that volcano we see in the background would have been really neat. Yeah. Um, I felt like Lego tried something here, wanted to see how it went, but ultimately didn't want to push too far with it. I would call it a very safe theme. Which pushes us to year 1995, the last one for this episode. Very short wave, only, I think, four sets. And yeah, kicking right off with it, 1788 treasure chest, 159 pieces, four minifigures, $22 retail, around 14 cent price per piece. Wow, that's some crazy retail values. Resell. $212 used and $930 new. And that's just for the first set. This, this is... Yeah, this is a pretty rare set. I was lucky to obtain it at a local bricks and minifix store for a decent price. It was North America release only, so that explains some of those costs. And what you're getting is just a nice parts pack. You're getting the last of the Islanders. In the leaf for this, this year, um, you know, when there's corner wall panels in that kind of stone grassy prints, which is nice, a big pirate flag, you get the Islander canoe, King Kahuka, an Islander, a small pirate flag, Captain Iron Hook, pirate palm tree, and just kind of like a little stone structured base with a crocodile. I do want to mention, I forgot to mention it previously in 1993, um, in the skulls I scooted, it also had those blue lanterns I mentioned that the Imperial flagship had in 1992. This is actually a last appearance, as far as I'm aware, of that Blue Lantern piece. So it's exclusive to three sets. And it just kind of makes sense why this set is so expensive. It's it's a cute little one, though, I gotta admit. Yeah, it seems like this is kind of like the Islanders. Instead of like fighting on home soil, this time they're taking the fight to the pirates. You got this like rough, rocky structure, the cannon lying around. Um, If anything, I think the best way to describe this set is messy. Not in a bad way, but there's just a lot going on. There's not a lot of structure to show that everything's like haphazardly built and it's just like just a scrap. That's all it is, like a, a big old fight. So, it almost yeah. seems like Lego was using whatever part inventories they had extra with this set. Like they were like, oh, we have still some Islander stuff, throw it in there. Oh, we still have some of those red columns, throw it in there. Oh, we still have some blue lanterns, throw it in there. It just kind of felt like it was a whole 
mashed up of stuff. But kind of like you said, I also didn't want to forget the, I don't have the box for this set, but the box for this set is actually really cool. It's, it actually looks like a treasure chest. They made it kind of in that shape. So it's not a typical box that it, it's relatively cool. I recommend looking it up. Oh, okay. So yeah, if you have the chance, once again, set number 1788 treasure chest, I'm guessing that could impact the resale value for sure. And another kind of tiny set, we'll say, 6254 Rocky Reef, 103 pieces, three minifigures, retail for $15, around 15 cent price per piece. A lot cheaper than the other one if you were to buy it, used around 45, new 155. Yeah, it's, I mean, what's not to love here? This is Pirates in a Nutshell. You got an island with buried treasure, actual buried treasure this time, compared to all those other sets previously that just had the treasure chest already unburied. Here you can actually bury it. You get a skeleton, two pirates, a red rowboat, and um, a parrot. Just very simple and something that we needed to have in this pirate's line as a whole. Yeah, very simple set, but I think of every set, so far, I think this embodies what Pirates is all about the most, funny enough. Like you said, it's like a blue base plate to suggest water, really tiny island, once again built with yellow bricks because sand hasn't been invented yet in LEGO World. <laughs> um, uses those like mountain pieces, those like big molded ones. It looks like it can open up to show like a dead skeleton inside, it suggests that there were failed attempts before to Pirates. And what's really cool is that, yeah, one of the top base plates, yellow sand base plates, can be lifted off to reveal like the treasure inside, underneath. Really cool. I think size and price doesn't reflect how cool this set is. It's really neat. And I did want to mention that that plate that you can like lift off is actually on a turntable. So when you swivel it, that plate hits the, the big rock piece, which actually moves it to open up to that skeleton. So it's a cool little plate feature. Wow, that's pretty advanced. Yeah. So really, really sick set. And following that, I feel like as I'm reading down this line, this entire wave wasn't really stuck with any one faction. It felt like every faction got a little bit, a little slice of the pie. And here we got 6263 Imperial Outposts, six, 216 pieces, four minifigures, retail for about $27.50, set you around 13 cent price per piece. Um... Used around 140, new 193, and it's a return of our red coat friends. What a nice little outpost. I mean, I can just imagine this next to Imperial Trading Post, and it would look incredible, especially mixing Cannon Cove into the mix. All the sets have the same color scheme. I like that red awning on this one. The prison to the right is nice. Kind of underneath that awning, you can see a little table with some mugs and a uh, goblet. To suggest like that's where the break area is for the soldiers. And yes, you do get two red coat soldiers in this set, along with Governor or sorry, correction, Admiral Woodhouse in this, which is his last appearance in the Pirates Wave. And you get a big pirate or correction, you get a big red coat flag, which is always a nice thing to have, especially with those breaking all the time. And you get a small little canal for the rowboat to park in, if you will, on the left hand side. Yeah, I think if you remember from last episode with the, or no, two episodes now, with the um, French army's version of like their outposts with like the mini bar and stuff, this is like the British version. Once again, like they got the little jail, they got like a dining area covered with the red awning. Second floor is like the cannon and the overlook. And like you said, it's separated by a little arch piece to kind of, it's like a mini cave canal kind of entry. Really cool set. Does the job, bro. It is very neat. And uh, one thing I want to mention, too, is if you can see there right underneath the red awning before you get to the little table with the blue goblet, the blue mugs and the goblet, you actually have a little platform that can lift up. It's on a hinge and you can hide either treasure or, I guess, in this case, the map underneath the, the structure of the base, which is unique. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing it in the box. Art. That's pretty cool. And it looks like Lego took note of like the previous set of the island or sorry, Rocky Reef. With like putting stuff underneath the plates. Well, that they're integrating it in more than just one set. Keep it up. And the last set of this rather short um, year is 6279 Skull Island. 378 pieces, six minifigs, retail for $53. Set you around 14 cent price per piece. 
resell is around $155 used and $750 new. This is the last good pirate base, in my personal opinion. It's the last time we see one on a big 32 by 32 base plate. This one is not raised. However, you get a decent stone cave structure supporting a tower with a winch. It has a nice skull brick built um, opening entrance to lead to a canal, kind of similar to the Islander one we took a look at previously. I like the the colors used here, the red and black, the little dock to the side. And I do want to mention that this is a red beard one, not iron hook, so you get Captain Redbeard. And this is the last set of all of pirates, at least for these vintage ones, where we see the red coats. So they come with a red rowboat, a soldier, and a captain slash sergeant, and a small red coat flag. Yeah, like you said, James, pretty um, solid structure. But yeah, I can see this why this is like one of the last good ones. Um, like the previous set, there's kind of like this hollow island thing where like it's a big mountain structure, but the middle of it's hollow. And the skull is completely brick built, which is really cool for its time. Looks pretty accurate. Can swivel to open like a hidden passageway. Definitely some cool features there. Above that is kind of like an archway outpost thing. Nothing too crazy about it. Very simple. Then you got like the gray brick built dock next to it with the cannon and all. Got just a couple like little boats or what are they called? Um, rowboats. Yeah, rowboats. Sorry. And yeah, very simple set. If anything, I. I'm a little underwhelmed by it. Like, I think it's not bad with like the cannon and all. I'm mean, not the skull and the K feature, but outside of that, she feels a bit lackluster. And yeah. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree with that because we compare it to the other pirate bases we had before, Forbidden Island and um, Rock Island Refuge. And those were really nice train builds that kind of, or like even printed um, base plates, where this one just kind of feels. It just feels like they were kind of throwing in whatever they had left. It just felt like they lost some creativity. Yeah, and I think what we're noticing as we go with each year up until this point is like it's it's been good, but we're starting to see the slate fizzle out. Like the ideas are starting to reach uh, stagnation, and we're going to see that especially as we start nearing the end of the pirates' history as a whole. Next episode, we'll cover the years of 1996 and 1997. Only like 12 sets total there. And then there's a huge jump. Like the next sets we get are from 2001 and 2002. Those are just re-releases of already made sets. And then Dead Silence till like 2009. And from there, it's like pretty much nothing else after. So we'll, we'll see how this all, um, all of this like leads up to the future of LEGO Pirates. And like we said before, the idea that we're basically at the point where LEGO's nearing the uh, point of bankruptcy. So keep that in mind for next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks once again, James. Um, I loved like talking to you all these times, and I look forward to our last couple episodes together. I couldn't agree more. I'm having a ton of fun with this series. Yeah, and be sure to follow us on Instagram at Blocks and Talks. And James, I think you also have an Instagram too. Yes, uh, at Jaws Brick World. Yeah, so be sure to drop both a follow and keep an eye out because we'll be releasing a little teaser about the next history of Sue. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you.